Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on psychotropic drug indications, off-label usage, and typical dose ranges. This video will be looking at psychotropic medications from the point of view of the drug classes. So we'll look at different classifications of the drugs, the trade names, the generic names, the typical low and high dosages for those drugs, and the FDA approved usage and common off-label usages for the medications. As a reminder, this video is designed for use by counselors. And in another video, I talk about the role of the counselor as far as psychopharmacology, uh, the different roles, including advocate, monitor, educator, and collaborator. And I want to remind you, if clients wish to modify the use of medication in any way, refer them to the prescriber. The medication information on this video is for educational purposes only and should never be used for any other purpose. Low dosage ranges, high dosage ranges, FDA approvals, and off-label usages change rapidly. Also, there are many more psychotropic drugs out there than there are contained in this video. The intention of this video is to give you an overview of some of the more common drugs that you'll be seeing as you're interacting with clients who are being treated at the same time by prescribers. So let's take a look at the psychotropic drug classes I'll be talking about in this video. First we have the antidepressants and the atypical and typical antipsychotics, anti-anxiety medications, tricyclic and tetracyclic antidepressants, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, also known as MAOIs, anticonvulsants, stimulants, and I'll also be reviewing a few other classes of medications. So we'll get started with the antidepressants. And all the slides from here on out are going to have the same format. We have the trade name, the generic name, the class, the typical low dosage, and the typical high dosage, the FDA approved indications, and common off-label usages of the medication. So as you see, clients come in and they tell you about the different medications they're on. This gives you an idea what different symptoms they may be treated for. However, remember there's off-label usages that are not on here, so never assume just from a prescription that you can figure out the diagnosis. You'll need more information than than uh, just the prescription medication. So some of these you'll see uh, fairly often. Some of them aren't quite as well known. Uh, popular medications in this class include trazodone, which is an SARI, a serotonin 2 antagonist serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And it's the only one I have featured uh, in this list primarily used for major depressive disorder. Uh, that's what MDD stands for. And off-label can be used as a hypnotic. Other common medications in Balta, that's an SNRI. That's a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor indicated for major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. You also see Effexor quite a bit. It has many FDA approved indications, and it's also used off label for post traumatic stress disorder. Uh, PANIC, of course, stands for panic disorder, and SA stands for social anxiety disorder. Now, the trade name Serazone, uh, it, that medication is no longer produced under the trade name, it's only available in generic, and that's used for major depressive disorder and post traumatic stress disorder, uh, as is Selexa except Selexa is also used for panic disorder. Lexapro is fairly common, generalized anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, 
And again, off-label is post-traumatic stress disorder. Luvox we see sometimes mainly for OCD. Paxil is fairly common. As you can see, it has many uh, FDA-approved indications, as does Prozac. Prozac can be used off-label for social anxiety disorder and body dysmorphic disorder as well. And then we have Welbutrin and Zyban, again, very common, uh, major depressive disorder and smoking are the indications for those medications. And Zoloft, also a very common antidepressant. It can be used to treat uh, off-label. It is being used to treat body dysmorphic disorder as well. Taking a look at the atypical and typical antipsychotics, Again, probably the uh, more common ones here would be uh, Abilify, mainly used for schizophrenia, also bipolar, Clozaril, uh, usually is the last resort for treatment-resistant schizophrenia, also can be used to treat bipolar, Geodon and Risperdal for bipolar and schizophrenia, and Risperdal off-label can be used for anxiety, Seroquel for schizophrenia and bipolar and generalized anxiety disorder off-label. Haldol is a typical antipsychotic, and it's still used fairly often uh, for schizophrenia. It can also be used for severe agitation. We usually see that medication uh, used more in inpatient settings than outpatient settings. And the remaining uh, typical antipsychotics, the most uh, popular ones would be prolixin and thorazine, are used to treat schizophrenia. Now taking a look at some anti-anxiety medications. Uh, as you notice, most of these are benzodiazepines, which are extremely uh, popular for uh, anti-anxiety, social anxiety disorder, and panic disorder. Uh, the most popular medications in this class would be Ativan, which can be used for anxiety and alcohol detoxification. Boost Bar, which is not a benzodiazepine, uh, but it can be used for generalized anxiety disorder. Clonopin, which is an extremely popular uh, benzodiazepine, a long half-life, it's used for anxiety, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and it's also hypnotic. Valium is still occasionally used for anxiety, and of course Xanax is also fairly popular. It's a uh, benzodiazepine with a short half-life, and it's indicated for OCD, panic disorder, and off-label for its use for anxiety. Notice here, too, that several of the benzodiazepines are used for insomnia. And in, we get to the other classes uh, slide. Uh, you'll see that some of the um, agents used for insomnia are not benzodiazepines. Oftentimes, they get confused. Uh, the three medications here that have FDA in approved indications for insomnia are benzodiazepines. Now taking a look at the tricyclic and tetracyclic antidepressants, we don't see these uh, terribly often. Uh, Remeron is one you'll see occasionally, and uh, amitriptyline, Elevil, is another one that you'll see uh, fairly often. All these medications are very similar in terms of the uh, approved indications and off-label usages. All of them approved for major depressive disorder, and the very uh, the most common off-label usages are depression and for norpramine, uh, is depression and panic disorder. So now taking a look at the MAOIs, I have four popular ones listed here. And you'll notice MSAM has an off-label usage for anxiety. Uh, all four of these medications are FDA approved for major depressive disorder. Now, one note about uh, MAOIs, uh, they do come with severe dietary restrictions. Moving on to the anticonvulsants, uh, many of these medications are also referred to as mood stabilizers. So Anticonvulsants are used as mood stabilizers. The actual class of medication is the anticonvulsant class, uh, but oftentimes you'll hear uh, 
the term mood stabilizer used interchangeably. That's not um, unusual at all. There's some medications in here that you probably will see uh, as a counselor. Depakote, uh, used for bipolar and seizures, as well as off-label for anxiety. It's a very popular medication. Lamictal is a very popular medication used for seizures and bipolar. Lithium, of course, used for bipolar. It's an element on the periodic table. And it's technically not an anticonvulsant. It's an anti-manic. Uh, Neurontin is used for seizures, uh, but off-label it's used for bipolar and anxiety. And it's likely that you'll see Tegretol, Topamax, and Trileptal as well being used for uh, seizures and off-label for bipolar disorder. Now, when you see bipolar in the FDA-approved indications or the off-label, uh, that refers to bipolar 1 disorder. But many of these medications, the other medications, are also used for bipolar 2 disorder. Now, taking a look at the stimulants, uh, primarily these are used for ADHD. And again, you'll see many of these uh, as a counselor, uh, Adderall, a common medication used for ADHD. Con Concerta is also very common. And there at the end of the list, Vyvanse uh, is also a common medication, common stimulant used for ADHD. Notice that many of these medications are also used to treat narcolepsy and daytime sleepiness. Now taking a look at the other classes of medications, and we'll start with the anticholinergics, with cogentin being one of the most popular that you'll see. And you can see it's indicated for Parkinson's disease. In counseling settings, you'll most often see cogentin used to treat extrapyramidal symptoms, such as tardive dyskinesia. We also have a few antihistamines, Benadryl and Vistril, uh, used for allergies. Benadryl is used for allergies and it's hypnotic, and Vistril is used for anxiety, and it's an anti-itching agent. It's also used for alcohol withdrawal. Then we have Inderol, which is a beta blocker. It's used for hypertension. It's a medical usage. Its mental health usages include panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Then we have two hypnotics, Sonata and Ambien. And I referred to these before when I was talking about uh, benzodiazepines. Oftentimes, uh, individuals believe these are benzodiazepines, uh, but they're not. They're hypnotics, and they're used for insomnia. In a similar fashion, Stratera is often confused with stimulants. It would not be unusual for counselors to look at a list of stimulant medications and see Stratera on that list, but Stratera is actually not a stimulant. It's an epinephrine reuptake inhibitor, and it's used for ADHD, just like many of the stimulants are, but can also be used to treat depression, bipolar, panic disorder, and anxiety. I hope this video is helpful to you. Uh, remember, it's just a general guide, uh, certainly not comprehensive. As I mentioned before, there are many more medications that are listed here. And this information, the low dosage, high dosage, FDA approved indications and off-label usages uh, change from time to time. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.